ask for an exception in the following year if schools are still wanting that. It's not got quite the evidence um, behind it, as uh, life skills does. We will be working on needs assessments again. We've done several already. Mm -hmm. We did a, a meth community assessment workbook. We did a opioid community assessment workbook. Um, but this needs assessment will be more broad than that. Um, we will be offering a health fair through our new uh, network and um, education with CEUs attached for different professionals. Um, we also, separate from this grant, we have been working with the Opioid Task Force. Um, Humboldt County, of course, is part of that. Um, we've been doing the Lockstone and Overdose training. Um, we'd really be happy if we could have some additional people attend the Opioid Task Force. And um, recently we uh, wrote for a mental health awareness training grant. It's a SAMHSA grant, the first one that we've written. And um, we were granted. So it's a three-year grant, um, $125,000 a year. And we will be providing mental health first aid training um, to adults, youth, public safety, veterans, and older adults throughout those three years. So, And that will be at no charge for people, and it's just to help people recognize signs and symptoms and refer them on to services when they um, suspect that that would be something that would be helpful to that person. Um, we are requesting, as we have in the past, um, $7,200 in FY20 to support um, staff time, supplies, and travel for the prevention department. Any questions about any of the presentations? Well, we were at a meeting just last week and they said the eastern half of the county, the issue is heroin. And you get on the other side of Interstate 35, it's meth. Is, is that right? We, um, we did hear that when we did our um, the opioid um, community assessment workbook, mm -hmm. we did hear from law enforcement that um, there is, uh, they were finding needles in a, in one of the cemeteries here in town. So that probably is opioid, heroin. Um, we are starting to see more and more of it. I think at the time that we did the needs assessment, people were not aware of it um, in that fashion. They, they might know someone that they thought of used prescription drugs, mm -hmm. but um, once people are no longer heroin's able to get easier to get, probably. Excuse me? The heroin's probably it easier is. to get than the op opioids because they and get them. The doctors are, are completely, you know, right. they're really looking at other ways to treat pain. Right. Mm -hmm. We have started to see people come in with heroin as their drug of choice and they are IV users. So that was one of the reasons that we really started looking at, ha you know, having our own medication assisted treatment unit um, because detoxing off of heroin is really terrible. I mean, it's really terrible. And what you what you find is when the doctors will no longer prescribe prescribe opioids, which is you know just a fine practice. Um, you know, people that are addicted are going to do whatever it takes. Um, more, you know, more so than what they ever think they would. Um, and typically, what you find is people who are using opioids are younger people. They're usually working people. Um, you know, so you'll you'll. <coughs> You'll hear about people having um, back surgeries, and they've been maintained on opioids for, you know, many, many years. Um, with back surgery, there's lots, I mean, with lots of surgeries, there's lots of pain associated with it, and so they've been increasing the amount of opioids, and sometimes, um, even though the doctor says only take so many, really every, you know, every hour, people are taking more than that. Um, and when the doctor starts saying, like, no, I'm not going to refill prescriptions early, which in the past they probably were doing that, um, you know, people are really left with some, some poor choices, you know, but choices they feel like they're forced to make. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And the meth, I, I have to say that in our catchment area, we never saw meth really go away. No. We saw it change, yeah. but um, it is across the state becoming more prevalent. And I did bring, I almost forgot, um, one of the things that we did was um, the task force is comprised of all of the six counties and 
Um, I wrote a grant for the Fort Dodge Police Department. It had to be a law enforcement or other agency that applied for it. And we received um, <coughs> these drug disposal bags. Um, I think I got 2,000 for that one. And um, you can put uh, 45 pills, 6 ounces of liquid medication, or 6 patches in the bag with warm water. You kind of shake it up, leave it open for a little while, um, and then you seal it up and it's safe to go in the garbage. So, um, you know, they offer the national take back days mm -hmm. twice a year, April and October, but this is a nice alternative for people when they can't get to one of those. Yeah. And much safer to get rid of them than leave them in the cupboard. Clean out the medicine cabinet. Right. Can they right. take those back to their pharmacy? Though, um, some pharmacies them? will. Not all of them will take everything. So that's one of the things um, that makes this nicer. I believe um, Walmart pharmacies is offering, if you ask, they'll give you a, a packet to make the medications null and void. But not all pharmacies are doing that. Okay. So. But yeah, some of them will take them, some of them won't. I think they have disposal at the hospital, don't they? Yeah. Pretty sure they do. Mm -hmm. Here. They could. I'm, I'm sure they probably yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I brought some of these for people if they'd like. And if you know anyone that would like any of these, an organization or individuals, we have a lot of them. I'd have one. So yeah. I'd be happy to. Um, I got one in my yeah. truck. You're going to need it on the road. <laughs> no, I had it. I got it from Armenia and I, I, I just, it's still sitting in the back seat. <coughs> one thing I would, and I don't want to, <coughs> I just would like to tell you that they are still having tours, right? Yeah. If people are interested in coming down and getting a first hand view of, of, I've been on this board a couple of years now, and, and it's kind of amazing to see the, the things that they've done and the age of people that are in it versus, you know, and trying to get through this and and see the, the positive things that it does. And I would, I guess my opinion is, is I think Humboldt County would, I hope we'll continue because we surely have people that are in need of the services that they provide. And as soon as the new facility is open, uh, I haven't been in there since this summer. So, I mean, the one part of the roof wasn't even up. So I'm anxious to come back and, and see what it, I, I've been keeping an eye as I drive back and forth through town. But I'm, I'm anxious to see what it looks like right. and to get us out of the three facilities that we rent and have of our, uh, anxious to see what it is gonna, how it's going to turn out. Yeah, we should be open um, in the new facility in May. Um, we will have a grand opening, so we certainly would love to see people come and take a walk through the facility. Um, anybody that's interested in, in looking at our current facilities, we certainly are still doing tours, so if anybody's interested in um, taking a look at those things, or if you know of anybody who would be interested in donating to our campaign, let us know. Well, the other thing, yeah, Michelle, really I'd happen. ask you to touch on briefly is your, we talk every month when we meet about when people call. Yeah. Um, there's only a small window where you decide I'm going to do something today and you call and, well, we don't have any room for you. Right. Then, <coughs> well, today is now going to be next month when I get the bottom again. Yeah. And that... They, we we go over that and over that and and they're constantly working to try to make sure that when that phone call comes they have the ability to get them in there and that is our goal um, unfortunately there is a shortage of of residential beds of all types you know mental health beds substance use disorder beds um, what we notice is that folks that are coming in for substance abuse treatment typically have a mental health disorder as well. Um, Fifteen years ago when I started at the agency, we saw only people with substance use disorders. So if a person was bipolar or schizophrenic, we were like, nope, they have to go to you know mental health treatment first and then come to us. Well, that's not the case anymore. Uh, you know, because they've closed those mental health institutes, um, two out of the four, those beds are just not available. Uh, there's hospitals that no longer offer inpatient psychiatric services. So now um, we really have worked diligently with our staff 
to become more co-occurring capable, as we call it, um, to recognize those signs. We have a psychiatrist that is um, through telemedicine that comes to our residential building every week um, and spends a full day um, prescribing medication, stabilizing folks. Um, so people typically with mental health concerns may stay longer uh, because it may take the first week to just get them medicated um, and stable enough for them to really benefit from the substance abuse treatment. But we no longer can say like, no, nope, go get that fixed before you come because the wait for mental health services is way too long. Mm -hmm. um, and if you send somebody out saying like they have to have that fixed or taken care of, um, they're using to such high extent they could die between that weight. Um, so we are, you know, we're just not able to do that. That's why we see that these substance abuse beds are becoming um, <coughs> beds. They really are. And that's why we have such a long wait list. Um, so again, moving from 26 beds to 44, I, I feel we're going to be full. Um, we do always reserve some beds, um, primarily for a person who is an IV drug user, because we do know that people that are using IV drugs are like high priority um, and a, a high susceptibility to overdose and death, um, and then anybody who's pregnant. So a person who is pregnant or using drugs via IV, we get them in within the first you know, 24 to 48 hours, no matter what it takes. Um, because we will, so sometimes people are like, well, you're reserving beds. Yes, I am. Um, we have to. We have to ensure that we can get those folks in um, because they are just so high acuity. Um, okay. important. Now, you mentioned you were looking for people for the um, opioid task force. Yeah. Who do they contact for that, and how much, what type of person are you looking for to be on that task force? And they can be anyone. We have um, some law enforcement that are on it. We have some people from different hospitals. Uh, we have um, some people from the schools that are on it. Um, we have a mother that has lost a child to opioid overdose. Um, so we really are looking for any partners. Okay. Um, we have one in Story County too, and we have uh, one of our the supervisors is on the task force. Um, we also have the um, county attorney on the task force, so you know, just a wide variety of people because we really do want a broad perspective of what's going on in people's communities and what the needs are. Okay. NAMI, some different mental health people. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's no others. Who, if someone would hear this, who would, who would be the contact person for that? Oh, you can contact um, Michelle or myself. Okay. Um, I can bring my cards in, I'm sorry. Um, my extension is 1404 if you call that same number. Okay. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate all that you have done for us. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. <coughs> Back to drink. All in favor? Aye. 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 Who was the second? While we're waiting for Chris, can I go through the bathroom? Yes. So, is there two separate funding requests? You know what? I was going to Well, the one is the building. Yeah. We, we pledge. For 40, 40, or 5,000 roughly. 4,500 last year, and now they want us to bump it up to five. five. Years. And that was five years. Five years. Or what year are we in? Of that? Third year. Well, second. Well, second year. Second year. Yeah. So basically, they want us to increase our building fund about 500 bucks. Okay. For that. So that's and that. The other one is operating fund of the 7,200. That's, that's, that's a status quo yearly. That basically is cover our by, by the yeah. amount of people that we use, that number kind of blocks. Is that like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Story <laughs> County who uses a ton of their, their costs are way higher. Yeah, it's based on what, how much we use. <laughs> That's right, right in this area. 
On the loop? Yeah. Okay. Because it's fairly close to the tracks. Okay. Not right there, but this it works under the track, so it's not like the problem of Lepcha County, but it's a big hole right there. Okay. Now we just got to figure out who could possibly do this. And it is a pretty damn big hole, so I don't know. What do you think? You guys may have um, talked to this idea it about it once it before. Marcia, is it going to be up here? Possibly. Mm -hmm. Possibly. On that wash out thing? Yeah, uh, I got a couple things there on that one of George Strait. He looked at it, they can't get to it till spring. And he said there's more wrong in that part of that, that area of the ditch and just the washout. Oh. So. Oh. Yeah, it's real close. Yeah, just to the north, if you will. Okay. I think they could, well, I know they can do it, but of course, when I go look at this, he says, well, I'm going to fix that right away. I said, ah, okay, that's fine. It will be right now. It's a little cold. Yeah. We can't dig. And of course, everybody <laughs> thinks that, I'm going to this. So, yeah. I will right. actually get a talk to Jason. I can <coughs> mention this, but, you know, I have to go down. It depends on the spring. Mm -hmm. Do you want to that for your coffee then? Can I? Well, mm -hmm. oh, you can have. Do you need it? No, I just need yeah, a date just, on it. Yeah, put a date on it, and then I'll check. Oh, we can talk to direct. We can talk to anybody. Whoever can get it done quickest. True. Like right now. Yeah, yes, yesterday. <laughs> Sorry.
he needed to get it in and he needed to get it in. I'm like, mm-hmm. So he did this himself. Yeah. Did he have a little folder on it to do it? <laughs> oh, he, didn't, he didn't do it and then tell you. No, there was. <laughs> The hell's matter with his bookkeeping? <laughs> I don't know how he can remember it was even done. It's my thing. Like, Holy crap, bud. All right, everybody's back. Okay, we'll go into DD35 Alpha. Okay. We talked about this different times. Uh, like Trish just pointed out that article that was done years ago, that was for just the ditch clean out. So. At least it, this is more recent than that. But what I gave you is the summary. I think I might have presented this before. Dealing with working downstream from a drainage district. And it, my attempt was to provide the options available to you in a situation like this. You basically have um, three options. You can purchase the right of way um, along the ditch actually purchase it uh, so the district owns it uh, or you can purchase easements so you just maintain the right to work on it or That's you can similar to what we do when we put a tile in right we have an easement or yeah, above yeah. the tile yes, yes exactly you have a permanent 30 or 40 feet tile. whatever it is above across this, the tile if you did it this method on this one you'd probably do it the same way you have a permanent easement a certain width and a temporary easement wider so you can work mm-hmm. along the trees or whatever. So, And then the third option is annexation. The only way to have the people along that stretch of ditch pay would probably be the annexation. Um, so that's three options. Can they do a waterway agreement? You could. I mean, if you can get everybody to agree. What's that? It, just, it would be an agreement between the district and the group of landowners. It's um, a recorded document stating yeah. who pays and who has a right to work, basically. It, and yeah. it's recorded in the lands so that if they sell a property, the new owner is aware of the... But the, my question is, is, if you annex them, does that protect those people from excess flow or damage from above? Or no, is there a... Because you're, you're going to be limited what you can do. Mostly it's going to be tree clearing and, and uh, islands in the channel. There won't be no straightening and there won't right. be no widening and there won't be... No, that's correct. There's no altering to the banks. Right, you're just opening it up basically. Getting Say that again. Out. You, you won't be able to straighten it you won't be able to widen it. It's far. It's basically if you do what? Annex? No. With no. Any, any, of any of this. Yeah. We, we, you know, we can't go in there and make it 30 feet and dig it out and widen it. All we can do is clean out blockages. Like our ditch above it. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to find you that. If you yeah. annexed it into the drainage district, you would have the ability to do that. You'd if you have the ability to go after that. You'd have to get permits. Correct. You'd have to get the Corps involved in DNR. But it's doable. I mean, I'm not really in favor of annexing this, but... So what is the, I guess, to keep it on task and going in in a positive direction, the ultimate wishes is to clear it or just to clear the brush? Well, to clear anything in the channel. There's islands in there because trees have grown in the middle of the channel even. Uh, Mostly it's a clearing project, then you'd have to see what else you can do in the in, on the internal part of the ditch without calling it an improvement. Islands... It's really not an improvement because we're right. not going to widen it right, Mm-mm. or straighten it. Right. It's mm-hmm. basically to clean it. Yeah. Maintain it. Maintain yeah. Maintenance. Clean maintenance. Maintain yes, it. yeah. it's maintenance. It's that, maintenance. That, that there was no maintenance on this like the balance of this whole ditch. Yeah, because it was just taken as a natural stream without Kind of any. just, a, yeah, one of those spots. Yeah. So the easiest way to, to look at it is if you go up on 16th Street and look to the north where it's already clear and then look to the south where it's a mess. Right. Mm-hmm. It wants the south to be like the north. 
But it won't be, will it? Not quite. I mean, not quite. No, I, we don't have to be that wide, but no. we at least have to be able to look at the trees that are logged in, jammed in there, and figure out that. My impression is the best thing you can do is go through and mark the trees you want to leave. Mm -hmm. um, because I know some of the concern of the landowners is they don't want to just strip out of there yeah. completely. Right. Um, arrive at a size or something that you'd be willing well, then to leave. How, how are we ever going to come to that agreement? Because the people it, down at the, and I don't start a hornet's nest, but the people at uh, Springvale that want to sit and watch squirrels and whatever run up and down the, these trees are, that's what they want to do. But yet, we're going to have them go out and mark the trees that stay. And some of them are right up along the bank, right up along their parking lot. It has to be, a, it would not hurt to have someone involved, but it's it's not going to be their say necessarily, um, depending on how you handle it. Um, well, we've already had the discussion. I'm surprised that I'm going to take a wild guess. Everyone sitting in the audience isn't. That, yes, it is their Harlan's uh, drainage yeah. district, but they aren't here probably for that as much. I know these guys aren't. Yep. Uh, and we already had this discussion. We don't have any of the adjacent landowners <coughs> to this property. I'm a little surprised. So we did have the discussion. I guess we could have Trish go back and look at the minutes, but I think it went to the easement. Seemed like it was pretty agreeable to everyone that I would this waterway agreement is that whatever is least you know, confusing. Is there... I mean, should should this area, I guess, in my opinion, should they pay for the whole district? No. That was the same. No. I, I don't okay. see it. They haven't been for, well, ever. History, right? This is not in right. the district. Right. So I don't think the annexation, but we're just looking for an easement is basically an agreement to do work in this area. Mm -hmm. And that's what they would be included in a reclassification of the open ditch, wouldn't they? If they were to be you have to do if that. If they were annexed. I, I don't think we need to go to the annexing they part. They would be included unless you annex. Because that would be the reason not. I just want to understand why would you not want to annex them if, if Because they then they have to pay for, for example, the project that's going on right now that, that's uh, the okay. drainage part that benefits the landowners. Upstream, they'll, they'll fight you tooth and nail okay, if you want to. Yeah, if you annex. yes, they did. They, they get basically get amounts to it. It'll be a lot more have, difficult if we try to annex. Yeah, okay. they get no benefit from. Okay. I'm going to pick on Harlan. Okay. <laughs> His <laughs> drainage. He gets a benefit. The landowners in District 35, Branch C, get benefit. They all understand the benefit if they have to do ditch clean out for the, yes. in this example. But these folks that live in town. They get no benefit from okay. that. And to purchase a right away, I'm sure they don't want to sell their property. About More than likely. Think so they want to so I think I, outlet. Do you, does anybody that remember that the, this discussion outlet. previous? Right. Almost exactly. Did, wasn't it easement was not contentious? Yeah, that one I didn't seem to get much feed. I, they, they weren't too opposed to the easement. No. Now we can handle the situation you're talking about by classifying it as the lower main and upper main so that the people in the lower they don't out. have to pay for the work up above. True. I mean, we can handle it that way if that's a stumbling block. But it still is gets any time you do any annexation reclassification, it becomes a bigger deal than just getting the easement. Yes. So the easement they would be paid then. Something. They Something. Pay a lot because we're. I mean, yeah, they're still going to have use of it. Yeah. It so be nicer. Permanent, done. temporary. Yes. Like a ditch is, yes. and, and I believe, there again, I'm sure we have minutes on this, mm -hmm. that that was the direction when we had the group of landowners in this area here. I don't think we got any real big pushback on that because we yeah. understood. And then the fact of going in and, like Bruce says, not tearing down every tree that the squirrel runs up and down or the deer rubs its antlers on or whatever the heck they're looking at, Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be in a slash and burn right. through this area, but we have to get into the main part of it yes. to clear out some of the obstructions. Well, there's like three, clean out. three different plugs that are in there. And they need to go. Through, and those things need to be cleaned out so that the water can flow through there unobstructed. And that Bingo. one is that tile 
those old tile that are sitting in there that are yes. three quarters full and they've started washing out around. That what about more. the legal representation of the district for this area? If they were annexed, they would be protected by the district. If they're sure. not, then they're separate. I mean... It's just private otherwise, yeah, there isn't any... Yeah. And... Mm. What, you know, what are you talking liability? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say legal. There's two or three. Liability and yeah. Because what if the, the thing I is, guess. well, the way I look at it, also, if we um, purchase the property, mm -hmm. then I think you're going to get a lot more people not against this. That, that's my thought. So it would be a purchase slap annexation? An easement, kind of. If you purchase an easement, they still retain ownership of it. We just have the right to maintain it. They don't. We, we've got Things a jungle easy. in there. How about if you get the state forester to come in, look at the trees. They could tell the health of the trees. They could tell you which ones need to be moved, which ones need to be stayed. And they could go up through there and we could clean out the creek and they'd mark everything that would need to be gone. Yeah. Then it would clean like it out for the health of the trees. you get somebody in here? I think we could probably get a state forester up to do it. That takes the responsibility. I know that you're not, Bruce, I know that you're not the state forester, you know, but you were gracious enough to go investigate this and take all well, the pictures. There's a mess. It's a mess, but does it really require much more than common sense to go in and clean we this area the, out? We go to the city park when we wanted to open that up when it was a jungle along the river. They come in and mark both sides, the museum and the park side, all the way up. So that's a good idea. Yeah, I like it. Well, if it's uh, yeah. sponsored by the state, yeah. that, does, that, that does get you a look for saying, "Why you cut down my favorite tree?" Yeah. Well, the state and market. it would save our butts. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and there's an there. there. yeah. yeah. It will. It will happen. If you wanted a more third, more of a third party's opinion, yeah, what third party if you, or professional opinion, professional rather than yeah. Well, now so the easement hopefully at the minimal cost. The thing of it is, all this business, the people landowners in District 35 are going to pay for the easement, and they're gonna, they will pay for any uh, work that's done in there to clean this mess up. With the easement, obviously, the adjoining property owners in this area don't pay a dime. Right. But yes. there again, does not really benefit them. They, no need for it. That's where I think the easement is the route that needs to be moved forward with. And I don't know why we haven't moved. I don't know why we haven't moved forward with it by now. What do you have to go? What happens if you have to go back in there in another five, ten years? We have a permanent easement. You permanent easement. have a permanent easement. Who's going to pay for it? The uh, people that were in District 35. Yeah. Not these people. No, no these people. they're never going to pay for anything. That's how you get this mm -hmm. moving forward, which was, I don't know, there was no vote taken, nothing was official, but that was the direction I felt from the last get-together when they all sat here. Well, if we don't do something with it's the down <laughs> below, pretty soon that down below is going to obstruct up above. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it already is. Well, let me, I think Carlin's the only one that's here from District 35. And I know you're just one landowner in that district, but does that make sense? Because it benefits the drainage from your drainage district. The, the people, you know, already the reclassification, which you just did a new one, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. does, that does that bother anyone in the drainage district to pay for, you know, the maintenance of this lower part? Not for most of it, but I think you're a little wrong and you say that there's none water from below the cemetery that flows into there. That there is yeah, there's probably tiles, I'm sure, that dump in there and stuff. Well, the city, I'm sure, has something that dumps into there. Well, there, is, there is a benefit, then, for those people to have it cleared in that area. Probably. And the property owner, where would your water go if it got dammed up around your property? Where would it go? Down the hill? Just like it does when it comes out of Hog Slot's uh, parking lot up there, it runs over to that street and down, what is it, 19th Street? Eventually gets in there, doesn't it? Yeah, goes down to the bottom. I, yeah, that's a point well taken. And Rick's thought of it could be its own little 
it's, it's, it's well, then it's an annexation. It's an right? annexation, but it's a, it's it's classified as its I own spot. Well, yeah. No, they don't pay for this new improvement and all that right. stuff. Right. But well, okay, we can look at it this way. We could try the annexation thing, and if it don't work, we can always go back and try the easement. Well, wouldn't it be better to call and get an opinion on it? Who would I call when you say call? Well. Isn't there drainage attorneys that we would deal with? Mm -hmm. I mean, rather than throw a rock at the hornet's nest and get everybody in here on Monday morning because we just <laughs> made them all mad. I kind of thought they'd be here today. Well, well I, I kind I, of thought so myself. Can't speak for them, but I, I wondered if people didn't just think that, you know, the easement thing was not a big deal to them. I do. And I, I wonder why it, we haven't done it. it. I don't think it would be. I don't think so. And I'm talking expediting this because the the fact of then Bruce's investigation, there's obstructions that need to be cleaned out of there. And the sooner they get cleaned out of there, the better for mm -hmm. Harlan and those upstream owners' drainage. But if we go to an annexation, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to take a year if we start today. Uh, not that long. I mean, because we could do a report within a month. Well, how long then you're going to have to get the landowners of that adjacent property involved yes. in it. Oh, yeah. You know, if it's, it's, work won't get done until a year from now. At the sure. soonest. It will take the balance of this year to just go through the annexation. Probably There's an obstruction well. down on the river. The, that mud that has filled in across that lagoon, mm -hmm. all that water has to reach a certain height before it goes up over that right. moat where all the geese sit. Did I even look mm -hmm. at all the geese? Oh, yeah. Thousands of geese I agree with that. The, they do get benefit of water going into this drainage structure, although for the mop that runs in there from this lower area that we're talking about, whether it's cleaned out or not, it's, it isn't going to affect them. It's going to affect the upstream. That's what our concern is. A so. negative impact would be affecting them. What's that? I mean, if there was... Well, if, it, if, if we the damn thing that the geese sit on gets any worse, eventually it's going to back everything up. Well, but that's, And that's what we're trying to get rid of. They're going to take the dam out. Yeah. But I didn't say that on the record. And okay. if you do an annexation, you have um, the ability to tell them, like, they want to do a footbridge to say that you have to be within this perimeter to build this. Otherwise, they could put whatever they want over it. That's true. It could restrict, be a hazard. I mean, I, I don't think I'm not asking for more now. work. Well, <laughs> you're going to get more work, but and you're going to fight through an annexation. Then they'll show up, and they'll say, no, 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 we don't. Cause don't you have to get it? My, my question is here, okay, you're going to go through the annexation. Are you going to annex all of that land that drains into this, or are you just going to annex... 40 feet on each side of the stream. I did. <laughs> That's another question. That's a good question. See, then you're going to get a bigger area, and they're going to get more pushback. I mean, you're going to, if you go to annexation, typically you take in the water. Watershed. Yeah. There you go. That's what Which is, is bigger than 40 feet. Considerably bigger. And then you're talking annexing all the city property in, and, and it's a lot of fun. And it will never get accomplished this year. Are you folks representing the property owners along there? No, no they're different. <laughs> the <dreams. laughs> they're, they're, they're just wanting <laughs> to get over. They're 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 I, I agree with what you're saying, but this is the problem with the annexation is it is not going to be a quick deal. I'm going to be affected by Marla, what did you say over there? What's the liability of the drainage district if you go with the just an easement or one of these others if there's some damage that occurs down the line? I'm just asking because I don't know. That's a good question. That's good. Yeah. What happens if you take the trees out and you get water moving faster and starts eroding your bank? What I've seen of that, it looks like a pretty steep grade. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have the ability to go in and maintain that with an easement. And right. if you annex. Okay, go ahead. What about Highway 3? They would be annexed, right? The DOT? Depends on how you handle it. You, you could. I mean, Just because they could be creating a restriction, for one, yeah. that may not be addressed by 
and the thing is, I mean, when it's a drainage so. district, you have control over that. If, well, if, if you put it on paper, the Highway 3 bridge is fine, or the culverts. But if you put a pile of dirt and silt down there in the pond, or in that backwash by the dam, that's going to create a dam down there where Highway 3 is going to be affected right on upstream. Yeah. So you need to clean out down below too. Well, if you're going to go downstream at all, it would be nice to go south of the highway actually yeah. and include that right by fairway. ditch. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the thing. The trees that are that big now that you can pluck them out of there and not have any problems yeah. with it would be yeah. the time to do it. But yeah. in five yeah. years yeah. when they've doubled in size, it's a whole different project. It's a lot more intense. Yeah. I don't have a clue. I'm I'm willing to do whatever we have to do to. I sure don't want to pay more taxes on. Because that is going to affect that. My I have a, I don't have a building that butts up against it, but I have a building that's within a block of it. Yeah. I said we. All, it's in my, it's Rhymers and Rhymers, so I'm guessing Tom's the first, he's older. Uh, <laughs> Does that make any difference? <laughs> yeah, I got it. No, he was the one that wanted to know, what are you guys doing? I said, well, we got to, and I, I, I think that, just look through those pictures, I think the other thing that Humboldt Homes is more interested, that, that bridge to me, I don't know what, are they going to improve it? No, I think what they want to do is put a, like a box culvert type thing in and, and have a wide wider path. cement path that they can drive their lawnmowers back and forth and things like that. And maybe even a pickup, I don't I have no idea, or a little Kubota type things or things like that. Do they like want that. to see what our box culvert was going to cost on that road up there? That's well, they're probably throwing deep. maybe a tank car then, I don't know. <laughs> But I, I know that's what they're thinking, and, and if it's if we annex that, that in, then that structure is going to be you'll have more expensive. Put it that's that way. That's right, because you want that capacity of that check to be sure it's not restricting flows. And, that, and that would be considered a private well, crossing, which they would have to pay for. Yeah. And like Highway Three, if you were to clear this out and not do an annexation, and you're forcing more water through there and it happens to wash off the roadbed, that becomes a problem with, um, for, what is it, forcing water on oh, your neighbors, basically, yeah. and we should talk damage. Maybe we should strike about this before yeah. we get much further. I think so. Doug? See what, see what is more, have him visit with about whether we should annex or easement. Now, I know you're not a drainage attorney. No, but, but I'm around it all the time. The question is, to expedite getting anything done, I think you would pursue getting the easements. Is it, if that'd this, be, yeah, that'd be the easiest. If this had the easements, and there's really no pushback to get that accomplished, at least get some, you know, of the obstructions gone, the trees, some of the trees cleaned up. That doesn't prevent annexation down the road no. if no. you have an easement. No, mm -hmm. that's true. All we need is authorization to put a, a report together describing how much land is permanent, how much temporary. But I mean, so to have that easement in the sooner than later future to get some well, of this done, the easement. I think the easement's a route to go, but I would like to clear it with the drainage attorney I that it, by clearing this, that we don't all of a sudden now get sued by the state for taking out their thing because we made the water go faster. Right, you could check on that, but and, but that's fine. But you have the easements, that does not preclude you from having it annexed down the road. No, true. No, mm -hmm. but I think right the best way to do it is with yeah, Doug's advice. I, I mentioned that too. Check on so this concern. Get rid of the brush. Kind of start the annexation process at the same time. I don't know. Don't need to annex it. We'll get the easement. But it, you know, with the easement, that doesn't mean it can't at some point be annexed. Right. I think we're. I know everybody's worried about legality. Yes, we should check on the legality. But we're. You know, this has been this way forever. So we're just addressing it in a concern with the easements 
Well, who who would we? Who is there? People that would clean that out? Yeah, yeah. there's a guy right there. He loves that right kind there. of stuff. Yeah, well, I know, but I guess that's my question. Without knowing that we are we are wanting to go in there and clear cut it, like no, it's not a flash and burn, and it's going to look like you know there's no trees. There's like five mile. obstructions in the whole thing right now, and once that five obstructions are cleaned out of there. The water will flow. That's the yeah. biggest thing. Then we can figure out the tree dilemma. No, no they come in and mark trees, good trees, bad trees, trees, and, and some of them are good. Gone. And he says you need to take yeah. that one out to protect these. Yeah. I think that's a I really think we're way somewhat way. blowing this out of proportion, as does happen with the legality of it. Check on that. <laughs> Who, what's it take to get these easements? Well, you, you still have a hearing. But I don't think it's got the 40 day requirement. I'd have to look at that. That'd be something to ask. I guess. And so then you look at any landowner yeah. up against the area. Yeah. And they have to be notified. Notified. That's right. That's the direction. I think we need to do that right now. And check on our ruling from the drainage attorney. This is what this is the area we we're thinking about doing. What kind of cost do you yeah, think is going to be associated? Uh, Harlan's asking for the basic blockage removal. Um, just to clean it out as you've been discussing here. If, if if the full blown easement, if you went in there and cleaned back most of the brush, 20, 30 feet on each side of the stream, you're probably going to want the trees all the way. Yeah, 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 unless the city would allow you to burn them. So I can't burn them there, so that's a little extra expense. Mm -hmm. But depends on how many trees. I mean, it's not a long distance. But There's a lot of trees. It's tough to work in there because you yeah. can't take them all. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, if you can just go in there and doze them all down, it gets easier then. It really goes, but that ain't going to work. Maybe I had the numbers, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll like I'll, I'll, I'll I'll like you know, roughly a thousand bucks a day. Google and yeah, I bet it could be twenty-five thousand, real easy, maybe. Uh, I'd be, I'd be thrilled. I, I would think I'd go in there and clean a lot of trees up for five grand, but I'm not. Don't quote me. On no, that. I haven't even worked. So, no, but what'd you say, five thousand? Deal. Rick, I have pictures of it, and uh, walking from the highway down towards. The cemetery, 16th Street. There's places you can't get through it. It's that thick. That's what the I'm deer saying. have I'm left tied that have been sneak in between buildings and out trying to run through there. Clean and then drag them out to the and then, and then halfway up in the middle, you got humbled homes. It's got the bridge that goes across it, and then up around the humbled homes, mm -hmm. someone has a private bridge that they put in there that it, it takes no longer living. Even the brush because. What do I get? And then I cut, start cutting a tree, and someone comes running out of the house waving, and says, "Oh, don't cut that tree!" You know? But, but Jeff Purdy owns the majority of that. Yeah, he owns the biggest share of it. He owns the ground over across from uh, oh, well, Laguaria, oh. that field, and then most of that down through there. There's that hay ground, Jeff. And when we talked about it last time, he was—he didn't have any problems with it. No, no. I can sure get after it if you want. I'll be cheap. Well, I can show you the pictures and you can take a look at it. You <laughs> might want to adjust your. Maybe a better, closer number. Well, you want to go on a good day where it's a little crunchy because it's. Crunchy today. You'll see some big, uh, <laughs> big tracks where I was trying to go through there on a wet day and it's a mess. Oh, yeah. I, de I definitely do it now while well, everything shows hard. And then the other, the other thing I would ask is do you want to do with the stumps? Can I cut the tree and leave the stumps? Or you want them grubbed out? Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to this. Yeah. I think. So when this in the water, I would say I can get them out because you, you got to open it up. But right. Yeah, if it's on the bank, maybe put some tore down on them. There you go. We don't need to. This isn't a golf course. Most you start digging them out. Now you we, no. Now you well, no. Go we get. Yeah. And and they're getting. It's not a slash and burn. It's to no. clean out the the. For the flow of the water, I, I, I think we're making this more complicated than it really is. Yeah, could it be difficult in spots? Yeah. You're listening. You guys got the parameters. It's like get the stream opened up. Right. 
Yeah, that's what we're yeah. But yeah. the first thing is we got to get the legal permission to do it. Yeah. So we got to create the easement. The the work. I, I believe the easement. I think you bring up a good point. Check with the drainage attorney. Explain what we've discussed here. Mm -hmm. This is what you know let's, we're let's, moving uh, towards. I'll make a motion that we proceed in the to the permanent purchase of easement with a temper. Excuse me. Yeah. Permanent easement downstream. Consult with our drainage attorney any possible liabilities with that. And then we'll convene next week. And one more thing. What's that? How about contacting a forestry person? No, we don't need to go that no. way. That, that'll be later. Okay. But okay. let's. Uh, Let's go down that road, talk with the drainage attorney, and convene next week after his consultation and make a decision next week whether we're going to do that. That's my motion. Kind of lengthy. I'll second that motion. I think we just need a legal opinion. If our with permanent them. easement has any liability issues yes. for cleaning this stream. Yep. Is that clear enough? You got it all clear. That's mine. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I'm the mudslinger. Any other discussion? I know. No other discussion? That's All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. I'm glad this works here, too. Though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> mm -hmm. My truck fell at the Ford Road right now. I'm thinking that Linda will be frosty. You frosty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Corn dog. I nice hope you more. got a lot of fuel on it. <laughs> It'll be nice and warm. Yeah, gee, you could put out a, 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 a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Right. Yeah. Just, there again, we should have went that route three months ago. Right. Uh, it's easy to drop the ball. Just it's drop, drop. Yeah. Anything else on DD35? I need all these those trees for the paper. I am not making those on there. Yeah. You could have them. You did the paper would take the trees? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a big so parking lot we can have them dumped and <laughs> take them to Ted's house. Uh, okay, no other discussion on 35. We'll move on to DD10. We've had a petition recently. The petitioners are here today. I just quick look back when I got back in the office. Um, we have some 1987 plans when this was cleaned out, so 31 years ago it was cleaned out. Um, in 1987? Yes. Was it an entire clean out? It looked like it. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, two, little less than two years ago, one of the culverts or one of the bridges was replaced with a culvert. Box we culvert. Were, yeah, yeah. We were involved in approving the size of that culvert. So, uh, Ben didn't think there'd be any culvert work required as part of this. That just be a clean out. So are you looking at a spot clean out? I, mean, I guess I'm probably, probably a full clean up. Okay. Well, they, did, well, they wanted it looked at so they could make the decision. Decision is the money cost. Yeah. Two days worth of work, we can have all the field work. What our do. best bang for our buck is going to be. We the culverts, we can have how much silt there is, everything. Uh, it depends on what we find out there. I said it started in Pat the um, quarter section at the end of this ditch. Let me see, Pat the wet hole in that Lewis. field. I need more depth of the pipe in the ditch. Sure. I need to drop at least two yeah, foot, no, three right. foot would be better. No. Right now, by the time I give grade, go 1,600 feet out in our field, no. I have one inch of cover. Oh, jeez. Oh, probably not. Wow. And the, the main that's in there now, I've dug up 300 feet of it every single tile. Yeah. It's frozen. It's yeah. this much cover. i got to start new, but I need depth. Yeah. And we would be able to determine what depth to go out to legally. Mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if it wasn't a couple feet at least. Okay. Yeah. That is an existing. That's an existing district tile. It's all boogered up. Tile pad had mentioned something about needing depth, but the tile going back is junk. It's junk. It's just junk. It's just junk. It just keeps cracking the more you try to do. Yeah, and see, a couple of years ago when they put that box in on 240, Ben was out there one day and we. Well, I think Ben had taken some measurements, and I think, from my recollection, he said there was about 22 inches of silt. 
At the bridge. At the bridge. And then from there back up to the north, which would be probably a mile and a half to two miles. That there's sections of that area that have been silted in quite a bit. Because mm -hmm. I know Ed Smith and myself have both, both done some tiling in that area and put new pipe through, and it was hard to get enough depth into the ditch to make it effective. It don't look like a lot of pipe that's bad, say, for trees or shrubs. Right, because it's clean. It's just it's tilted in the bottom. And that's, you know, it's quick and easy to oh, yeah. out, move along and yeah. level the soil and mm -hmm. make some rocks. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the question is we need hard and fast data if this can be a spot clean out situation and under 50,000. Right. Or is it is the entire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. I'll make a motion to accept the petition for the, um, I would say, the exploration from Jacobson West Guard to see what needs to be done with this ditch. I would second it. Motion first and second. Do we have any more discussion? Is it? In your investigation of this, because the talk has been, and you probably heard it yourself, on you know more of a work order situation, you know, and we have up to fifty thousand, correct? Right. On a work order. Right. Is that doable? You know, is there a spot here, a spot here, and a spot here? You still yeah. need the length of know the the siltation and the ditch depth and everything, yeah. the length of it, but we need to know. Is that doable, or are we looking at a entire length of ditch? That's out? what the report would show. We take the two days and, and get all the full line elevation, silt depths, pipe outlets for the entire ditch. For the entire ditch, so yeah. and, and that would give us every so often we take elevations on the bottom and probe it, and that would tell us whether we can just do a spot clean out or if it takes the whole thing. Rick, where would the, Usually what spot clean out the, is you go in here to look while the bank's shallow. left off so you clean that spot. That? What yeah. protection yeah. was that where you said it was so shallow? Well, some of you know, on 50,000, if it's only a clean two and nine. Yeah. 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 quite a bit done. Oh, 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 you get a hell of a lot done. And if it's quite a bit of it, so you can't and the other, we have the that documentation. This isn't as bad here or here or here or wherever. It's it possibly we do another spot clean out a couple years down there. Possibly. Possibly. It's it's possibly. Clay. We put a box in I've never seen clay like that. It's got two inches in here. Mm -hmm. I've never here seen they have 22, 22 inches of silt. Mm -hmm. really. I can't well, remember what they, what they had the here. Cause the and these folks are more concerned going up here. Well, this is a mess here. I can drip the this That one. No, I can check. You can see it from the road. Some other maps. So well, I got you. This, this is a field here. This is small. And they put okay. laser, or laser elevations off it. For the well, I think if we get the data, that's, we can make the right determination. That's right. Oh. And the Just get, get the data. So and yeah. I got a feeling that you'll be at 1650. I think so too. And probably just hire somebody. But good. Well, you find that out, and we'll be good to go. I don't see any county tile. Well, that's what I was trying to see. Yeah. I said I couldn't see any county in there. Yeah, I don't. Any tile county. No. Rick, are you aware of Rick Pats and Rent probably knows too that tile issue? That they're talking about? Yeah. Again? The depth of that tile and it's shot. And that's a district tile? No, no, no. Private tile. tile. That's yeah. a private tile? I don't it's not that. I've not seen it on any map. Okay. Okay, so that's that's uh, more than likely need, private. I just need depth in the ditch. You, okay, so then the tile thing is being private, that doesn't include that doesn't Go into this district. Yeah, this that'll be done by okay. after this. But before I start. Right. I so then you get that. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that's a private tile issue. Not to us to Rick, but you know, I want to go as deep as I can, but at the same time, I don't want to hurt myself because it's always underwater. Right. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm yeah. dealing with. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, so your depth will be included in this report. Yes. Yes. That broken up tile, I don't think this county is Okay. As far as I know, I know. Okay. Know you're, okay. You're welcome. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thanks, Pastor. I'll just do it as a troublemaker. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's what we need. Put that in the minutes. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> We're welcome to it. I don't want to feel bad. I don't, I don't think we will. <laughs> okay. That was my only discussion. Okay. Just checked on that. Perfect. Any other discussion? All in favor of accepting the petition? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <coughs> yeah, that would be yeah. interesting yeah. to see what's going on. A week or two, yeah. you think you'd have that? If, if this was March 1st, I might say yes. But hey, you don't have to worry about getting stuck. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's, up, what's the level? Is there, oh, is there a lot of water in it? Is the ditch got a lot of water in it? Not a lot. No. No. There's some pretty low tile that are still running, and it's uh, not up to those lower intake or outlets, I should say. So. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the ditches are pretty low. I was going to most of them oh, I've seen. Is that right? Okay. Yes, there's no reason you can't get out there today. Yeah. You guys are always wanting to get in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't let him freeze the boat. <laughs> yeah, get it frozen. in. Yeah, that could happen. <laughs> okay, what else have you got on drainage? Um. Well, she's looking. I came in, we talked to King last week and they were planning to not come in for a week or two now with the snow and the extreme cold, but they're out there today. So Good for them. Yeah, yeah. Probably tomorrow what's, they're What's their thoughts if they're not going to come in with, they're going to wait till the ground gets froze four foot deep and then try it? Is that it or what? Well, yeah, they, machine problems and everything else is 10, 15 below oh, that zero, is. but uh, okay. yeah. I'm hoping that I I couldn't see real well from the roads, but I'm hoping there's a little bit of snow cover on the field and that helps stop the hell of it. If you looked at the extended forecast, it's not going to be warm. No, no. 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 Yeah. 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 If you get a little snow cover, that does keep the ground from freezing. So. Yeah, helps. So Thursday night, it's 18 below. Yeah. It's an actual temperature. <laughs> well, that's what temp that's what yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. 20 yeah. mile an hour wind. They're talking 35, 35 below chill factors. Ooh. Yeah. That makes my job. <laughs> 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 so anyway, they're, they're going to seal things up. They, they finished the boring completely under Highway 159, got that all back built. Um, and then you know, they did go back and work on the main pipe. Um, How big of a bore was that? 24 inch. 24 inch. Wow. Yeah. I didn't take them all. Righty, they got, I don't know, three, four loads more pipe. So they're, they still have pretty good supply of pipe out there. They got to be getting close to where they're kicking it down. Yeah. Coming up on an elbow and shortly after that. Smaller pipe and shallower. Yes. That'll all help. So well, they still said, just to reiterate, that they break through frost and keep going yep. if at all possible. Yep. Can I take one minute? I got an electronic response from my first summary of the work. Um, and they did, they responded with an email, just it's about three, four sentences. King's construction typically does not work weekends as they work 55 hours a week during the week. It takes weekends near the ends of projects to finish it, we'll do it. That's a family oriented company. We do not typically work holidays. King Construction is for anticipating the project would be complete in the spring or shortly before. We're going to do our best to complete the project with time for the farmers to work the fields and plant in time. Okay. So, and I did, we sent those two things certified. I got one of the certified things signed and back, and I don't know which whether it was my summary of work or the summation of uh, seed corn situation. I don't know which one they signed for. I'll have to okay. actually the numbers and figure that out. But there was another one where you, the original one, had the <laughs> progress and the fact that they are going to charge the penalty on mm -hmm. December 1st. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they've got that formal response from us. I haven't received a formal response again from them after we mailed those the last time. Where, what hub are we at? 
Almost exactly halfway through section four, halfway through 14. Uh, so we're at station 50, 55, let's see, 58 plus 50, I think it is. So it's, we're, we're just coming to or just past the center of section 14. Should get us halfway between 180th and 190th. Okay. I talked to the 800 mark, and he was happy with uh, the situation in their district. He actually got someone out there and got one of his intakes hooked to the end, very south end of sub five. So he was delighted that they were able to get out there and do that. So that'll be ready for spring. So Gerke is done? Yes. As yeah. I see, they were hauling equipment out, so I assumed it was. Yep. They figure they're going to have to do a little leveling in the spring. But that that's all they should really have to do, probably. So get through the freeze thaw and break up the chunks. Mm -hmm. and just get that surface right out a little bit for spring. Mm. So, yeah. Good. Uh, do we have any subsurface drains that have to go on that yet? No, I think that's all done. That's all done. They ran okay. a separate tile on some 100 marks to hook in several laterals. Um, no, I think they got all the area drains. The area, area drains, drains were in. Yep. Okay. They got all those in. So. All right. Yep. Good. Oh, I just, just for your information, um, you took action, or the boards did, uh, Humboldt Webster on 3-9. Uh, by Pioneer, as far as the railroad situation. I talked to Doreen down there last week, drainage clerk, and I brought Trish Asveld's for it. The work on that project on 3-9 stopped north of Webster County. We followed the existing tile, and then just south of Pioneer, we went over to the ditch, and we had a railroad crossing there. So the area Doreen was talking about is south of where you did that project. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the bills weren't going to help them there. But she so called we checked. Probably an older main. Yes. That's yes. That's quite old. old. I don't know if it was Humboldt 3 or Humboldt 9 or which, I don't know which of the numbers is the Humboldt. And at any rate, that was an early district project. Okay. The latest it would have been was the ninth project in the county. So, uh, yeah. 9-3 on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm guessing Humboldt's the nine. Yeah, because we're lead, I believe. So. Yeah, you yeah, you have much more of the acreage, mm -hmm. much more. Yeah. Just the problem area now is south of where the work was done. Yeah. So. That's all I had. I think we did turn in the um, reclass for a branch C, um, and. We made the adjustments. We met. The commissioners are here today. We met and made adjustments to that and got that submitted. So we have to have a hearing on that, of course. But yeah. Okay. You done? Yeah, I just have one thing I can do afterwards. What do you got? I'm just going to make a motion to go out of drainage. Keep us moving. Yeah, we're all done. We've got a budget after this. Make a motion to go out of drainage. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.